Saudi Arabia is the world's largest producer of desalinated water. In our next report, we take you inside the world's biggest water desalination facility. Flash floods have hit parts of Saudi Arabia as heavy rainfall has been reported across the kingdom since last week. Water is a lifeline for any country's prosperity. Imagine a nation like Saudi Arabia, the largest in the world without a single river, with over 95% of its land swallowed by desert. Surprisingly, it's also the economic powerhouse of the Middle East and North Africa, boasting a staggering GDP of about $800 billion in 2020. Now picture the Rub al Khali, a colossal sand desert spanning 250,000 square miles in this already harsh landscape. So the big question is, how does Saudi Arabia sustain itself in such a parched environment? The answer to this mystery is not only astonishing, but also filled with intriguing surprises. Buckle up as we uncover the remarkable ways Saudi Arabia, a nation thriving on oil wealth, secures the water it needs in the heart of the desert. What secrets lie behind this seemingly impossible feat? How do they make water flow in the desert? Join us on this journey as we reveal the astonishing truth. In a land where luxury and abundance thrive, it might seem ironic that something as basic as water presents a significant challenge. Saudi Arabia, a nation with a population of 35 million, including around 9 million non-nationals, is grappling with a severe water shortage. Demand for water is rising at an alarming rate of 5% annually, putting the country at risk of running out of water within the next two decades. To make matters worse, predictions of lower rainfall and rising temperatures due to climate change are compounding this issue. Situated in one of the hottest and driest regions on Earth, Saudi Arabia receives a mere 100 millimeters of rainfall on average each year. Yet despite its desert landscape, the Saudi government has long subsidized water, allowing its citizens to pay minimal amounts for this vital resource. As a result, Saudis have become some of the world's highest water consumers, using an average of 350 liters of water per person per day, in contrast to Europe's average of approximately 130 liters per day. A staggering 80% of Saudi Arabia's water usage is attributed to agriculture, a result of a government program from the late 1970s and 1980s aimed at achieving food self-sufficiency. However, this initiative faced challenges due to the country's limited water resources. To address this, pumps and energy were provided to enable farmers to extract underground water. Yet, these methods often involved flooding vast desert areas for crop cultivation. Despite the challenges, Saudi Arabia has emerged as one of the world's leading wheat producers, even though it takes an average of 1,000 tons of water to produce a single ton of wheat. In recent years, the government has shifted its focus away from self-sufficiency, ending subsidies for wheat and other crops. Instead, Saudis are encouraged to invest in land and water resources abroad through initiatives like the King Abdullah Initiative for Saudi Agriculture Investment. To combat the escalating water crisis, Saudi Arabia has increasingly turned to desalination plants for water production. Desalination is the process of removing salt from seawater to produce fresh water. This technology has undergone a revolution, making it a critical solution to the world's water scarcity challenges. Saudi Arabia stands as the world's largest user and producer of desalinated water, with 27 desalination stations operated by the Saline Water Conversion Corporation, SWCCC, producing over 3 million cubic meters of potable water daily. These plants supply more than 70% of the water for cities and a significant portion of industrial water needs while also generating electricity. Despite the promise of desalination, it comes with its own set of challenges and potential environmental drawbacks. While it offers a lifeline to meet the rising water demand in Saudi Arabia, the heavy reliance on this technology raises questions about its sustainability and impact on the environment. It may seem ironic that a basic necessity like water poses a significant challenge in a land of luxury and abundance. Saudi Arabia, with a population of 35 million, including about 9 million non-nationals, is facing a severe water shortage. Demand for water is increasing by 5% annually, and the country could run out of water within the next two decades. Adding to the challenge are predictions of lower rainfall and rising temperatures due to climate change. 
making Saudi Arabia one of the hottest and driest regions on Earth, receiving only about 100 millimeters of rainfall per year. Regardless of this arid landscape, the Saudi government has long subsidized water, allowing citizens to pay minimal amounts for this essential resource. Consequently, Saudis are some of the world's highest water consumers, using an average of 350 liters of water per person per day, far surpassing Europe's average of approximately 130 liters per day. A staggering 80% of Saudi Arabia's water usage is attributed to agriculture, a result of a government program from the late 1970s and 1980s aimed at achieving food self-sufficiency. However, this initiative faced challenges due to the country's limited water resources, leading to the extraction of underground water for irrigation. Yet, this often involved flooding vast desert areas for crop cultivation. Despite these challenges, Saudi Arabia has become one of the world's leading wheat producers. Even though it takes an average of 1,000 tons of water to produce a single ton of wheat. In recent years, the government has shifted its focus away from self-sufficiency, ending subsidies for wheat and other crops. Instead, Saudis are encouraged to invest in land and water resources abroad through initiatives like the King Abdullah Initiative for Saudi agriculture investment. To address the escalating water crisis, Saudi Arabia has turned to desalination plants for water production. Desalination is the process of removing salt from seawater to produce fresh water. Saudi Arabia stands as the world's largest user and producer of desalinated water, with 27 desalination stations operated by the Saline Water Conversion Corporation, SWCC, producing over 3 million cubic meters of potable water daily. These plants supply more than 70% of the water for cities and a significant portion of industrial water needs while also generating electricity. However, a study has revealed that the negative environmental impacts of desalination may outweigh the positives. By 2018, there were nearly 16,000 desalination plants worldwide, generating significant amounts of waste and toxic chemicals that harm the environment and wildlife. The production of approximately 95 million cubic meters of fresh water by these desalination plants also results in the generation of 141.5 million cubic meters of brine waste, a staggering 50% more than previously estimated. Brine contains harmful substances such as chlorine and copper with a salt concentration 5% higher than typical seawater. Disposing of this brine waste is a challenge, as many desalination plants release it into natural bodies of water, leading to adverse effects on marine life. Specifically, brine discharge reduces oxygen levels in the surrounding water, impacting sea creatures that need to consume more water to compensate for the elevated salt content in their environment. Apart from the environmental concerns, desalination is a costly endeavor, with estimates suggesting that as much as $29 billion must be invested in desalination over the next 15 years to meet the growing water demand. The desalination process also consumes substantial amounts of energy, with Saudi Arabia using up to 1.5 million barrels of oil per day to fuel its desalination plants, surpassing the entire daily oil consumption of the UK. Additionally, desalination appears to be a common practice in the Middle East due to the prevalence of deserts in the region. Even neighboring Abu Dhabi has established numerous solar desalination plants. They have also embarked on a groundbreaking venture by collaborating with Eon Water, a French company, to test a wind turbine that extracts water from arid desert air. The prototype has shown impressive results, producing 500 to 800 liters of portable water daily from air with humidity levels of 15 to 20 percent. Eon. Water envisions increasing this volume to 1,000 liters by enhancing wind speed. There's no doubt that Saudi Arabia's commitment to addressing its water challenges is indeed commendable. The unveiling of the Contra program during the Saudi Water Forum 2019 represents a pivotal step towards sustainable water management. This national initiative, launched by Abdul Rahman Al Fahad, the Saudi Minister of Environment, Water, and Agriculture, demonstrates the government's determination to significantly reduce water consumption in the country. The Contra program sets ambitious targets to reduce daily per capita water consumption over the next decade. 
By aiming to decrease water usage from 263 liters to 150 liters per person by 2030, Saudi Arabia acknowledges the importance of responsible water consumption in light of its water-scarce environment. One of the innovative aspects of the Contra program is its dedicated website, which enables citizens to register and pledge their commitment to water conservation. This digital platform encourages individuals to actively participate in the conservation effort, emphasizing that water conservation is a collective responsibility. The Saudi Water Forum 2019 played a vital role in advancing water sustainability in the country. By leveraging international expertise and attracting foreign investments, Saudi Arabia is working to adopt advanced water technologies and best practices from around the world. This collaborative approach is crucial in addressing the complex and multifaceted challenges associated with water management. Saudi Arabia's water consumption ranks among the highest globally, trailing only behind the United States and Canada on a per capita basis. This consumption rate is not sustainable in the long run and must be aligned with the country's arid climate and limited water resources. Apart from setting consumption reduction goals, the Contra program also places a strong emphasis on raising awareness about the importance of water conservation. By proposing strategies for rationalizing water usage in both industrial and residential sectors, it aims to bring about a cultural shift towards more responsible water practices. Dr. Abdul Hamid Al-Zahra's insights into the ministry's initiatives and projects highlight the significance of water sources in Saudi Arabia, which include desalinated water, renewable groundwater, non-renewable groundwater, treated wastewater, and surface water. These sources are vital for sustaining agriculture, urban development, and industrial sectors. Dr. Jacob Tompkins's comparison between Saudi Arabia and California particularly regarding water scarcity and desalination, underscores the need for Saudi Arabia to plan for the long term. While the country may not be facing an immediate water crisis, it acknowledges the importance of sustainable water practices to secure its future. Saudi Arabia's commitment to leveraging information technology, behavioral campaigns, and optimized systems to reduce water consumption is a proactive approach to transitioning from being one of the highest water consumers to one of the lowest. The construction of nine water desalination plants on the Red Sea coast with substantial production capacity demonstrates Saudi Arabia's dedication to addressing its water needs. It complements the existing desalination infrastructure across the country. Addressing the water crisis in Saudi Arabia is not only a matter of national importance, but also a global concern. Vulnerable segments of society are often the most affected by such crises, and responsible governance and international cooperation are essential in preventing widespread water scarcity. Saudi Arabia's initiatives in treating and reusing wastewater are also significant. By aiming for 100% utilization of treated wastewater by 2025, the country is positioning itself as a major market for water reclamation and reuse. This move aligns with global trends and further emphasizes the importance of maximizing water resources. The challenges associated with sewage treatment capacity underscore the need for significant investments in infrastructure. The estimated $53 billion investment required over the next 15 years is substantial but necessary to ensure efficient sewage treatment and safeguard public health. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So what are your thoughts about Saudi Arabia's strategies and efforts to address its pressing water crisis? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.